Welcome to the Nexus 2 Help Guide. In this video, we will be discussing the new features of Nexus 2.6. You can find the list of features by pressing the Help button and then selecting View Latest Help from Vicon.com. In this video, we will be discussing improvements to the data management, improvements to event detection, how to automatically number the cameras, the simple capture mode, quick reports, and how to view the combined output from multiple force plates. There are a number of improvements to the data management. You can now adjust the size of the divider between the tree view and the data pane. You can even hide the tree view completely by clicking on the Eclipse menu button and deselecting Show Data Tree. The Live Path link at the top of the pane now contains icons and arrows that when clicked give access to other folders at the selected level. You can also use these to open the equivalent folder in Windows Explorer. It's now easier to identify the trials. When you hover the mouse over a trial, the row is highlighted blue. The trial that is currently selected is gray, And when you mark a node, the row is red. There are also updates to the search function, which is covered in the data management video. The force plate columns now distinguish between left and right, where left is red and right is green. There are also additional options for custom data fields and a new backup or archive feature that will be discussed in greater detail in the data management video. When you are in the normal mode, that is, you are not in the event identification mode, you can jump to the next event by pressing the forwards or backwards buttons. When you're in the event identification mode, and when you press the forwards and backwards buttons, Nexus will jump to the next or previous event and it will zoom in on the appropriate marker and event. And the time bar will zoom to plus or minus 20 frames either side of the event. When you're on an event, you can press Alt left or Alt right to shift the event either back a frame or forward a frame. You can also click and drag the events using the mouse. To get out of the event identification mode, you can either press the enter event identification mode button again, or you can press escape on the keyboard. To customize the options that affect the event identification mode, you can go to window, options, or press F7 on your keyboard. Then select the time bar, and then under the heading event identification mode, you can choose to focus on the marker, and pick which marker Nexus will focus the left or right context on. You can also specify the region of interest by right-clicking on the time bar and selecting Select Current Frame to go to that frame. Or alternately, you can select Set Region of Interest and select the Start Frame and the End Frame. Once you save the trial after you have set the region of interest, you are cropping your trial to that region of interest. The Auto Number Cameras button will automatically number the cameras sequentially based on the position in the capture volume. It will pick the camera that is furthest from the volume origin and designate it as camera number one. The cameras are then numbered in a clockwise direction around the volume. If the cameras are positioned at different levels, the cameras in the level that contain the most cameras are numbered first. To use this feature, please ensure that you're in live mode, that all cameras are listed in the Resources pane Systems tab, and that you have the cameras calibrated or aimed. As you can see from my 3D workspace, the cameras are not in any real sequential order.
In the Tools Pane System Preparation tab, under the heading Manage Camera Calibration, select Auto Number Cameras, and you will see that the cameras are reordered accordingly. Simple capture mode allows you to maximize your view of the workspace and exposes a focused subset of controls required for repeated captures, allowing you to concentrate on the movement you are capturing. To access the simple capture mode, go to Window and select Simple Capture Mode. Alternately, you can press Ctrl H on the keyboard. The workspace that you have in the normal mode will appear in the simple capture mode. For example, I had the 3D perspective and a graph displayed. This is then carried over to the simple capture mode. However, I can still edit my workspace in the simple capture mode if I want to. Once you're in the simple capture mode, you can select a trial type if you wish, change the trial name and description, and start and stop captures. To leave the simple capture mode, you can either go to Window and select Simple Capture Mode again, or you can press Ctrl H on the keyboard. You can also set a view type to be displayed once you enter the simple capture mode. You can create and save your own view type and select that, or you can use one of the pre-made view types. To toggle this on or off, go to Window, Options, or press F7 on the keyboard and then select the Simple Capture Mode View Options. If you set this to off, the current screen configuration will be displayed when you enter the Simple Capture Mode. If you set this to on, the user specified Simple Capture Mode view that you have selected from the lower drop down menu will turn on when you enter the simple capture mode. You can select which view type you want from the second drop down menu. In this case, I'm selecting simple capture. As you can see, I've got the data correction view type selected where I've got my 3D perspective on the top and the data correction graph below. When I go to the simple capture mode, we can see that instead, the simple capture view type is being displayed where I have the 3D perspective on the left hand side and the camera view on the right. Quick Reports is a quick way to view multiple model outputs across different trials. To access Quick Reports, you can either go to Window, Quick Reports, or press F4 on your keyboard. In Quick Reports, you can select which gate cycle you want to view for each specific trial. You can choose the model outputs that you want to plot. You can choose to highlight the trial of interest. You can examine the average and individual spatio temporal parameters. You can write a report and you can save the individual report or the report as a template. For more information on Quick Reports, please refer to the Quick Reports video. We can now combine selected outputs from multiple force plates, both in live mode and with the trial loaded. In this example, I have a subject standing on two force plates and they are shifting their weight between the two plates. We can plot the FZ component of each plate individually and together. I'm going to split the screen to create a new graph and I'm going to select combined force plates. You can see that the bottom graph is the two force plates summed together. You can also visualize the combined force vector by going to window, options, or by pressing F7 selecting the force plates and then under the heading force vector checking the box draw combined force vector
You can also export the combined forces into an ASCII file by going to the Tools pane, Pipelines Operation tab, loading the export ASCII Pipelines Operation into the current pipeline, highlighting it, and in the properties, either selecting Selected or All, and then you can hit play to export it to an ASCII file. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to email us at support at